I would like to thank you, Dr. Carson, for um, coming on and providing this testimonial. Um, I had a great time at your school uh, at Guilford Prep uh, in Greensboro. We, I, it, it was fun. I thought it went well. And these testimonials from the principals at schools of folks that have seen the talk um, go a long way to helping other principals and other administrators and superintendents and all that understand the the need to uh, uh, to have this type of conversation. So I really appreciate your your doing this. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Um, I knew once uh, back in August, the first time I heard you speak that this is something definitely uh, I wanted to bring to our school and make sure that our parents had a, an opportunity to get in front of it and just to gain more information. I know a lot of times the subject matter is a little taboo or maybe a little difficult to, to deal with. Uh, on the front end. However, I know that um, if this is a, a, a epidemic that if we don't get in front of, we're always going to be chasing. And then again, our kids are, are worth hard decisions or hard conversations. And so to me, that was the overriding factor when it comes to ensuring that we figured out a way to make sure that this happened and making sure that we figured out a way we could bring this to Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And it is a it is it is a hard topic. It's one of those things that parents it it seems like they sort of are aware or they they're like, yeah, that's part of it, but they don't really realize sometimes the effects that this can have on young people and how prevalent it is. And so that's one of the things that we want to um, you know, that we try to that we try to stress when we do these talks. Um, let me ask, do you um, do you feel as if the parents came away with a better understanding of this challenge and some of the ways that they can work with their kids to address it? Absolutely. I think a lot of times as parents or, or even as educators, uh, we feel as if we have a good handle on the problem uh, because it may not be happening in our backyard. And so as as a principal, as a parent, um, I have an opportunity to kind of see that this is a pervasive issue that's taking place right here in our society. And that is up to us just to make sure that we equip ourselves. I was telling one of my friends, uh, a lot of times we wait till we're actually in the situation to figure out how we're going to deal with it. Um, this is one of these situations where we really need to gain that newfound skill set on the front end instead of the back end so we can be proactive when it comes to saving our kids and making sure that we're having those conversations with them about uh, some of the ills that are in the world today and some of the things that they're presented with on a daily basis and may or may not know how to overcome or how to figure out what that escape route is going to be. So I think your program, The Third Talk, lends itself perfectly to that. You give um, everyone in attendance a, a easy roadmap as to, hey, let's ask these two or three questions and shut up so that we can have an opportunity <laughs> to actually. Which is the hardest thing for parents to do. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I know I'm a dad of three girls and I think I got an answer for everything. And my wife tells me <laughs> quite often, just, just be quiet. Just be quiet and listen. I don't need you to fix it. I just need for you to listen. And so I think part of your process, uh, which is very simple, is for us to ask the question and then just be quiet and figure out um, how it is that we can develop and deepen the conversation with our child. Yeah. You know, I, you're right. I, you know, I, parents really want to have all the answers. And the truth of the matter is with explicit adult content online, this happens so fast and was so pervasive on every social media platform that happened. It's unless you studied it on a regular basis and were pre-prepared, it's almost impossible to have the knowledge necessary to um, prevent that. So we, you know, we, we like to talk to parents and we like to tell them in advance, yes, here are things that you can say, but also your child, unfortunately, is the expert on how this works um, right. and, and, and how, and how much they see it. So um yeah, so we find that just listening uh, can go a, can go a really long way. Um, I noticed you had your family um, at the at the presentation. Do you think there was anything that you heard that was um, 
scary or inappropriate or uh, in some way you wish your your family hadn't heard it was there anything that to warn parents about no not at all i had my youngest daughter there who's getting ready to turn nine on friday uh she was even in attendance and and so no i don't think there's anything scary the only thing scary is is knowing that that this is is circling us this this problem this epidemic is circling us and for us not to be uh, aware enough, cognizant enough, or brave enough to to have the conversation, to ask, you know, hey, what what are you doing? How are you being talked to in school? What types of things are you being exposed to, or what types of things are your friends being exposed to? And then just kind of going with it from there. But as far as the material, uh, as far as the lessons, as far as the the statistics and the examples that you share with us, none of it was scary to me. Uh, I think it's, it's very important for us to kind of face our fears as a society. And I know that we're supposed to protect our kids, but we do them a huge disservice when we don't have that conversation. And when we don't ask them about who their friends are, or what they're doing at sleepovers, or has anyone ever shared anything with you such as this? Uh, we, we, we have to put ourselves out there and, and be comfortable being uncomfortable when it comes to the safety and security of, of our children. That's a that's a great statement. Be 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 comfortable being uncomfortable. Right. You know, one of the one of the women in the video that I show said being uncomfortable is not a good enough reason not to have the conversation. And and that's really something I've tried to to forward in, in, in the message that, yeah, of course, it's scary and icky and taboo and all of that. But if we're grownups and it's scary and icky to us, imagine what it's like to a 10 year old or an 11 year old right. child. So right. how about the um, the other faculty and staff? Did you have you had a chance to speak with them? Did they share your thoughts? Did they have input in that regard? So, yeah, our faculty and staff was very uh, comfortable about it. Matter of fact, last week we went to a training exercise and while we were driving there, one of the uh, teachers were was talking to me and she was like, yeah, I think it's time that I probably should have had this conversation with with uh, with her child. And so um, I think it's something that we are aware of individuals like so I think sometimes we kind of act like we're the ostrich and we want to stick our head in the sand yeah. um, but again we have to make sure that we step forward and be proactive and and having this conversation because our, our you're right our kids um, may or may not get a whole lot of shots at it you know what I'm saying so um, if they uh, are being exposed um, then it's something that we as the adults or we as the professional educators need to uh, infuse ourselves and make sure that we are having this conversation so that we can um, help save our kids. Um, yeah. We start talking about texting and we start talking about sex trafficking and when we start talking about just plain out exposure, um, you know, it's it's a bad feeling. I was telling someone that back in my day, we we grew up and we learned some of our sex education from the locker room. Now multiply this thousand times over where the internet is now the new yeah. analogy for the locker room. And so our kids are turning to internet pornography uh, or internet videos or nudes uh, when it comes to just uh, learning about themselves, development, how to love, or what their warped perception of what love really is. And so I think your talk, again, uh, the third talk is an excellent uh, resource when it comes to equipping adults with some of the um, necessary skills in order to engage in that conversation uh, with your child, regardless of his or her age. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. And you're you're 100% right. You know, they're only young once. Right. By the time they're 16, 17, 18, that, that time has passed to be able to have a preventive conversation. And uh, you know, that's what we're trying to do at the third talk is 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 prevention. Um, you know, we we all know what the cures are, we all know what the long-term shame and blame and 
you know, unrealized expectations and, all, you know, we know what the, the, the problems are, but if we can get out in front of it, um, you know, we can, we can save our kids. You know, I also wanted to take a moment and really thank you um, because n not only for your bravery and your candor and your willingness to sort of, you know, plant your feet in the ground, steely eyed, look forward at a, at a real life problem, but you know, your, um, your willingness to take the risk, I think, um, to bring in um, the third talk, a, a topic that, that could be considered scary, not only shows sort of a dedication to your kids above and beyond, but also I think um, is can be an example. And so, you know, I just, thanks, you know, I'm, I, it, I, I, I'm glad that your family was able to come. I'm glad you were able to, to, to see it. And um, I really, I really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Again, uh, when I heard you back in August on the first day, I called my wife immediately after your session was like, Hey, I want you and my daughter to come. And I want y'all to hear this uh, because I know that it's time as a family that we start being proactive and we start engaging in these conversations and making sure that we have a realistic uh, understanding of the dangers of, of the severity of this. Again, our kids are only young once. And so it's really, really super important that we force ourselves in being comfortable and being uncomfortable and making sure that we get that correct information and that we help um, help our kids, help all of our kids. As a principal, I think that I've raised all these kids or at least had a hand on it. And yet yeah. uh, sometimes, you know, some of the things that go on in society may be passing us by, but we can't put our, our heads in the sand. We have to make sure that we kind of stand up and we kind of make sure we we help our, our all of our students. And that means uh, whether it's one conversation at a time or two conversations at a time that we have to get out there. I remember a point during your conversation uh, during your talk, your presentation, you mentioned the fact how the whole, um, the whole, uh, how addicting uh, this topic is when it comes to releasing endorphins and when it comes to just, uh, you said it was addictive as heroin was. Yeah. And yeah. so, and so that's just, that's, that's crazy when you start to consume that and you start to digest that. And so I'm looking at myself as a grown man, as a father, uh, as a godly man, I need to make sure that I go ahead and put myself out there and better equip myself to answer those questions and engage my own kids, as well as the children of others, as well as being an administrator. I just, it's a critical skill set not to have. Yeah. You, you know, um, yeah. So, so this content fires the same receptors in the brain as cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine. It's crazy. Uh, it is crazy. And so when you, when you're able to think of it in, in that context and imagine, you know, 11 year olds, 10 year olds coming across this content and then having that effect on their brain, there's more of an empathy, right? I think sometimes we tend to say, Oh, th that's, that's bad behavior that's a that's a, a, a not a bad child but you know that's bad behavior or that should be punished or something but when you actually sort of delve down into it the challenges that it presents to young people um i think there's an opportunity to be more empathetic um and to to sort of help them through um a very challenging topic yeah i think one of the points that really also stuck home with me is that you have to come from a state of empathy because if you come from a punitive system where uh you know where I, when my child would do something i would remove them off of social media so you can't be on social media for two weeks or you can't have your phone for two weeks well they just find other means uh let's let's face it uh, these kids are pretty savvy when it comes to yeah. getting what it is that they want to get so we have to make sure again that we just engage them and just be ready to to have that particular conversation with them instead of trying to come from a punitive model yeah let me ask um what would you tell other principals other administrators other um supervisors superintendents you know if 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 they had the opportunity or they thought about having the opportunity to actually have the third talk come and do a presentation at their school to parents and students, what would you say to them? 
I would say do it. Like having a third talk come in, uh, someone who's unbiased. I know, like myself, I have to hear something from someone else in order to start to internalize it a little bit. Uh, so, I think we all, I think that's I think right, right. That's probably human nature, right? So um, I think that we have to hit this epidemic head on. And it is so pervasive. And I always tell my my girl, like, you, you're not built like that. And so when you think about these 10, 12, 11, 12, 13-year-old girls, um, our boys coming into contact with all this all this content that's inappropriate, like their minds can't help, developmentally, they can't handle it. You know what I'm saying? And so as an administrator, I think it's our due diligence to make sure that we bring in someone or we at least create the platform to have these conversations because our kids need it. And I don't care if you live in rural America. I don't care if you live in the urban city. You know, it's pervasive happening in all of our schools, I think from elementary on up. And it's as an administrator, it's time that we face the reality and face the truth that um, we need help. We need help with this topic and we need to do a much better job uh, for our young people to help save them and put them in a, um, a better place. Uh, again, because they are learning all the materials from the places we don't want them to learn it from. Right. And so so right. we have to make sure we infuse ourselves so that we can give them some, some quality um, education when it comes to the topic and allow us as the adults to be the excuse for the reason why they don't involve themselves in such um, yeah. uh, content that's not appropriate for them. What about um, what about the parents? Did the parents, have you had a chance to speak with any of the parents that were there? Did anybody say, you know, this was great, this was horrible, I thank you for doing it, or please don't ever, you know, what, did you get any feedback? Yeah, so I was in a very unique situation where this is my first year in this current school, uh, and so um, I really didn't know how a lot of people react. But again, I would say that we have to put ourselves out there and that's just kind of how I operate anyway. And so the feedback I received from the parents were was thank you. And uh, as parents, again, we all want to believe that we're doing a fine job and that is not my child. It's right. our neighbor's child, but it ain't my child. <laughs> and again, so we had that re realization for us to kind of get our heads out of the sand and make sure we need to do what it is that we need to do in order to uh, for the sanctity and the safety of our of our kids. So they were very thankful uh, to have an opportunity to gain the skill set in order to to help their child be successful. Yeah, that's what that's what the response was when the parents came up to me afterwards. They said, thank you very much. That was really hard to hear. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. And, you right. know, and I, and I get it, you know, it, it really is. But just because things are hard, uh, you know, that, that's almost more of a reason that that we should do it. Absolutely. Um, what else? Anything else you want to you want to offer or share? Um, uh, only thing I would say is just thank you. Uh, I just want to commend you and the third talk. Uh, your resources are easy to use. Uh, your your approach is straightforward. Um, again, it's it's nothing that's overly complicated. It's just putting yourself out there and having the willingness to ask the question and then just be quiet and allow your create that safe place yeah. for your child to kind of ask questions or to gain new information or just to tell you like how scary it is and. So that's that's it. Just just thanks. I think your program is well deserved and it's something that should be featured in every high school and middle school across America. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, I really appreciate it. And uh, um, I look forward to continuing to work with you again. Your 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 bravery is uh, is admirable. And uh, and I do appreciate it. I do appreciate uh, and so is yours, John. So I appreciate everything that you do as well, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Carson. Thank you.